Welcome to the presentation of protecting the annuity role from fraud, waste, and abuse. I am Frazella Brookins at OPM Retirement Inspections Branch Program Manager. Hello, my name is Matthew Starback. I too am a program manager with Retirement Surveys and Students, also within Retirement Eligibility Services. Today we will focus usually on getting people on the annuity roll correctly and quickly. What happens after that happens? Life event changes status of, an, of annuitants. Does the change does the change in status change the eligibility? Yes, sometimes. Disability annuitants as well as survivor remarries prior to age 55. What we do is police the annuity role through survey matches and tips. Where we are on the OPM organization agency chart. OPM, Office of Personnel Management, Retirement Services, Retirement Operations, and here we are, RES, Retirement Eligibility and Services. Okay, and within Retirement Eligibility Services, or RES, we have the Group Manager, along with two Program Analysts underneath the group manager, which unfortunately is not shown in the organization chart, but we have a deputy group manager. Under the deputy group manager, we have three uh, chiefs. Um, uh, Ms. Brookins being for retirement inspections, which conducts interagency computer matches, conducts internal matches, fraud investigations based on fraud tips, uh, investigates missing persons, processes requests for waiver of annuity benefits, and addresses blocks for security purposes. The second chief is myself for retirement surveys and students. And retirement surveys and students is responsible for conducting surveys to determine continued eligibility for retirement and survivor benefits and administers the student program to determine eligibility for student survivor benefits. Third but not last is retirement benefits chief. The responsibility of this office is to process health benefits changes for retirees, processes five-year waiver requests, processes IRS levies, government claims. They conduct reconciliation for health benefit records with health plans, manages and supports yearly federal employee health benefit open season, and manages and supports distribution of the 19, um, excuse me, distribution of the 1099 R's for retirees. Objectives for this briefing. Why do we need to police our annuity roles? What are the results of our monitoring? We have two branches and a staff of inspectors, so it must be worthwhile. Uh, today we will these are we will talk about the current tools we use and and now and in the future. We conduct quite a few surveys and matches. Could, we could do more, but uh, we we do things online, and we have two marital. We have two surveys: the marital and student surveys. That there was a change this year. Um, we identify savings and overpayment, and potential. We also identify potential fraud. The retirement counselors. This is what you can do to help us. And these are what you can understand by uh, helping us police the annuity roll. All right, and regarding monitoring the annuity rolls, um, we do this by ensuring the legitimacy of payments, reducing erroneous payments, ensuring proper entitlement to benefits, who should and should not be on the annuity rolls, and lastly, identifying overpayments and savings. Why are these problems? We all know the retirement systems have grown in complexity. Many rules that af affect eligibility to certain types of benefits as well as the amount of the benefit, disability versus non, not, not disabled, re remarried prior to age 55 or not, affects the annuity. Um, these are some of the problems here.
improper payment problems is a great concern. The federal government has a responsibility to ensure every dollar is spent wisely and for the purpose which is, is, is intended, thereby reducing erroneous payments. The Improper Payment Improvement Act enacted by Congress in 2002. Going further with improper payments, 70% of improper payments occur because beneficiaries or family members delay or do not report changes on the status, such as examples would be uh, death of the annuitant or retiree, marriage of the survivor, uh, recovery from disability, and so on. Secondly, 19% result from inaccurate and or incomplete information provided by the former employing agencies about a retiree's past or previous federal service history. And 10% occur because individuals receive two types of federal benefits. The law generally o only allows one. And lastly, adjudication errors comprise a very small percentage of improper payments. And going forward, improper payments, what is done to reduce improper payments? We use uh, survey, surveys to uh, be sent out to, to recipients to determine if improper payments are being uh, caused. We administer an active data matching program through the Department of Veterans Affairs, Social Security Administration, and Department of Defense. We reconcile federal employees' health benefits program enrollment records with health benefit carriers. We pursue cost-effective methods to inform customers of events that have the potential to affect the amount of their benefits. We provide faster and more convenient ways for customers to inform OPM of changes that might affect or cause improper payments. And also, uh, video messages on OPM's website and pre-recorded information on our call center phone lines. Uh, next is regarding retirement surveys and students. Within the office, our major responsibilities is to administer the statutorily mandated survey programs, uh, which are conducted um, regarding the annual earnings survey of dis disability retirees. Uh, determine initial and continued eligibility for retirement and survivor benefits and administer the adult student entitlement program. Some changes that have occurred in, since 2016 is regarding the disability earnings survey. It is now mandatory for all individuals who are receiving SERS disability benefits to respond to the disability earnings survey. If not, then we are put them in temporary suspense until we hear from them. Secondly, regarding the FERS Annuity Supplement Earnings Survey, as of July of last year, 2016, it has become um, partially automated to help us become more productive and efficient in processing the large amount of survey responses we do receive each year. Uh, the following is a list of the different surveys that the Survey and Student Branch administers. Disability Earnings Survey, the FERS Annuity Supplement Survey, Marital Status Certification Survey, Student Self-Certification, Notice of Change in Student Status, Student Verification of Full-Time School Attendance, and the Representative Payee Survey. Uh, new changes to our process for the Disability Earnings Survey and the First Annuity Supplement, or uh, annuity supplement uh, Marital Status, and Notice of Change in Student Status Surveys will be discussed in more detail. Resources we use, information from benefit recipients and, rep and representatives, other offices within retirement services, other government agencies, Title V and the U.S. Code of Federal Regulations, and OPM's intranet. Automated surveys within the Surveys and Students Branch. Uh, we have undertaken an effort to automate the surveys we administer. In 2009, two automated surveys were implemented, the Marital Status Certification and the Notice of Change in Student Status Surveys. Uh, the benefits to the automated admi administration are provide expanded annuitant web-based self-service opportunities, increase productivity through improved tools and workload management, automate processing of response data, and overall to provide a faster and easier way for our customers to do business with OPM. 
regarding the impact. As with our other efforts, the customer's response to these surveys determines his or her eligibility to continue receiving a federal annuity from OPM. In 2009, uh, that was the first year the marital status certification survey required a mandatory response. That mean, which means that all 23,000 recipients had to respond to OPM regarding the year of 2009 and continuing. The notification of change student status is affirmative response and students should respond only if a change had occurred. Okay, next slide is the retirement inspections branch. I am the program manager for. What is a computer match and what is the purpose? We have an agreement between, it's an agreement between OPM and other benefit paying agency, electronic and automatic process. Uh, we identify individuals who are not entitled to but receive benefits and we correct and update information such as social security numbers, date of birth, and address change. The interagency computer matches we conduct, we conduct a yearly death match the Social Security Administrative Earning Match, the, o, the, office, the OWCP match is pending, a sign of an MOU, the Department of Defense Military Retirement Pay Match, the Veterans Administration Match, the FERS Annuity Supplement Match, which is also conducted yearly, and the Paris Match, which is an ongoing match with the um, I have to get back uh, I think it's the it's public assistance, the public assistance. What Pacific matches are conducted, uh, the duplicate Social Security number match, and we also conduct the CSA, CSF, DEF match. How the job is done, we receive electronic hits. W we do a paper response to the sur from the surveys forms received. Um, we we request for information, letter is sent to individuals, response of lack of, respo of response determines the appropriate act activity re result resolution. Benefits may be determinated unless documentation is provided to refute findings identified by the match. Response to various retirement inquiries. These are how we get this job done through these hits. What resources are used? Other agency resources, Social Security Administration records, the general public usually uh, gives us tips, uh, retirement documentation, laws, rules, regulations, the U.S. Title V Code of Federal Regulation, search engines, web-based information, fraud sites, the Office of Inspector General, Department of the Treasury. The consolidated death match between Social Security, Department of Veteran Affairs, and the Department of Defense, Social Security number driven, the electronic data network and automation process, automated process, excuse me, matches, matches weekly reports of death to those persons still active on OPM's annuity roll, benefits suspended, terminated, and the death master file. The return of our efforts identifying improper payments and savings. Through the DEF through the DEF match last year, we identified to 68 million improper payments, over 68 million, and our savings in last year is over 84 million. The fraud department, we, we investigate, uh, investigate allegations of misuse of the CSRS and the FERS annuity benefits through retirement related fraud tips, unreported deaths, forged documents, disability, re if someone's recovered, restored, or suspicious behaviors reported to the Office of Personnel Management through a representative payee, or if someone has remarried and receiving a survivor is the uh, surviving spouse before age 55. The Retirement Benefits Department, the Retirement 
Employee Health Benefits Program for Federal Annuitants and Survivor Annuitants, Government Claims, sorry, Government Claims and Tax Levies is what we process in the Retirement Benefits Department. Ms. Joanne King is the Program Manager for this department at OPM. And the Retirement Benefits Branch, who are we? What do we do? How can we make our jobs easier? How can we make your jobs easier? Uh, how to contact us? The Federal Employees Health Benefit Program. In this session, you will learn about the FEHB program and regulatory guidelines, including the basic knowledge of the program, connect what you do with the rest of the RSP organization, get to know your resources, including how to read the system, find information to assist you in what you do, learn something you didn't know, and have fun. The FEHB program overview, we center of Center for Retirement and Insurance Services provide quality customer service and know your resources. The program code of Re federal regulations, Office of Insurance Services, Retirement Services Program, the systems that program the FEHB program. Understanding the enrollment process. The enrollment process, updating enrollment in our ARPS and using GMAT, notifying the annuitant and notifying the courier through the 2810 and 2811. Open season versus regular season. Processing health benefits, transactions, and open season only during open season, usually the second week in November through the second week in December. Other than during open season, all health benefits transactions should be processed in regular season. Where to get more information through other training sessions, our portal, the Code of Federal Regulation, OPM forms, the SF 2809, 2810, and the 79-9, and the FEHB website. Well, we would like to thank you for joining us this afternoon for an overview of our um, how to protect the annuity role. If you have any questions, you can um, give us a call here at 202-606-0232 or 202-606-0249.